one's family, the fear of losing one's job, the fear of having no place to call home, the fear of being harassed or attacked, and the fear of having no one to turn to or for help. From discrimination in housing and the workplace to healthcare settings and schools, transgender individuals are continually denied their human dignity. As the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force and the National Center for Transgender Equality so aptly put it in the title of uh, their National Transgender Discrimination Survey report, the transgender community faces injustice at every turn. I have prepared remarks and I'm going to leave them and have, ask for someone to uh, print them uh, up and like or maybe you will and uh, distribute those uh, prepared uh, remarks. They were prepared uh, by a uh, young gay person uh, named Christian Sy uh, that works with me. Christian and I have done some phenomenal work in the last uh, two years uh, that he has worked with me both internationally and nationally. Uh, we have led the charge don't ask, don't tell. Um, we are standing in the forefront of, um, of the repeal of um, the Defense of Marriage Act. How dare people that represent all of us stand in the well of Congress and denounce marriage equality? You know something, I did, this is why I'm departing from my remarks. I want to think of two things that I think identify uh, where we are, uh, uh, what I uh, may be able to contribute in the way of sensitive uh, understandings and feelings uh, about where we are. Firstly, um, I did my own study after uh, uh, the right of um, uh, um, uh, gay, lesbian, uh, and transgender and bisexual people uh, to marry if they so choose in Massachusetts. And since that law has been implemented, hmm. interestingly enough, very few of those marriages have failed. And 60% of the marriages that took place in the same period of time with so-called heterosexuals have failed. So I'm beginning to think that maybe um, people uh, who are gay got better sense about this stuff um, marriage uh, than those of us that claim heterosexuality. I just offer that uh, for thought. Uh, Terry, I'm always glad that Wilson Manners is in the house. I'll tell you a story of intolerance before Wilson Manor got where he is. I was here in 1965. Gerald Thompson was the mayor of uh, Wilson Manor. And next to a Baptist church, a group was seeking uh, to have a shelter uh, for children um, uh, that had Down syndrome and other difficulties. The community, not the one that's there now, just think from 65 to now how far we've come. The community
up in the same sphere that my newfound young friend here that's in the fifth grade. I went to fifth grade at Altamont Springs. And I grew up with that same feeling of non-acceptance. We had to wait until people finished going to the post office before we could go in. I don't have to begin to tell you the number of times at the back of buses. We used to laugh about being at the back of buses. When I went to school in Nashville, I went on the bus to Nashville once in the winter, and it was very cold. And all of us in the back of the bus were having a ball, and the white people were wondering, well, what happened? Why are they so happy back there? Well, hell, the motor was in the back of the bus, and the heat was back there. They were cold. Yeah, 